Welcome to a lesson on the second fundamental theorem of calculus. I've also seen this called part one of the fundamental theorem of calculus in some textbooks. The second fundamental theorem of calculus states that if f is continuous on an open interval i containing the constant a, then for every x in the interval, the derivative with respect to x of the integral of f of t from a to x equals f of x. So notice how to find the derivative of this integral where the lower limit of integration is a constant a and the upper limit of integration is the variable x. This is equal to the integrand function where we substitute x for t giving us f of x. We can think of this integral here as the accumulation function a of x where a of x would give us the area of the shaded region where a is a constant and x is any value to the right of a. So the derivative with respect to x of this accumulation function is just f of x, the integrand function evaluated at x. Now I do want to mention that if this upper limit of integration is not x, let's say it was two x or x squared, it wouldn't be quite this straightforward. We would have to apply the chain rule in order to find the derivative of this integral. I do have several examples of this in other videos. But for our next step, let's try to justify this outcome before we take the shortcut. One way to justify this would be to first find this def integral and then find the derivative with respect to x. So if we wanted to evaluate this def integral, we would first find the antiderivative function big F of t. So we'd have the derivative with respect to x of big F of t, which we then evaluate at x, then a, then find the difference. So we'd have the derivative with respect to x of big F of x minus big F of a. Remember, a is a constant. So now when we find the derivative with respect to x, this would give us big F prime of x. Then the derivative of big F of a would be zero, since big F of a would be a constant. And since big F is the antiderivative of little f, big F prime of x does equal F of x, which is given by the second fundamental theorem of calculus. Let's go ahead and try this with the simple integral as we see here. Again, before we take the shortcut given by the theorem, let's look at this the long way and first evaluate this def integral. So we'd have the derivative with respect to x of, well the antiderivative of two t would be two times t to the second divided by two Of course, this simplifies to just t squared. So we have the derivative with respect to x, and then we have our antiderivative t squared, which we need to evaluate at x, then a, and then find the difference. So this would give us the derivative with respect to x of, when we substitute x for t, we'd have x squared. When we substitute a for t, we'd have minus a squared. And now to find the derivative with respect to x, the derivative of x squared would be two x, and the derivative of a squared would be zero, since a squared is a constant. So now looking back at this integral here, notice that f of t, the integrand function is two t, and if we evaluate this integrand function at x, we'd have f of x equals two x, which is what we found the long way. Now let's look at two examples and take the shortcut. We have the derivative with respect to x of the integral integrated from two to x. So because the lower limit of integration is the constant two and the upper limit of integration is x, to find the derivative of the integral, we just need to substitute x for t into the integrand function. So this is gonna be equal to sine cubed of x squared divided by the cube root of x to the fifth plus one. And for our last example, again we have the derivative with respect to x of this integral integrated from five to x. So applying the second fundamental theorem of calculus, we can simply substitute x for t into the integrand function to find the derivative of this integral. So we'd have 15 x raised to the power of five thirds divided by natural log of x to the third plus x to the second. So again, the second fundamental theorem of calculus 
shows us a relationship between differentiation and integration, and also allows us to find the derivative of integrals without finding the antiderivatives. And again, I do have several other videos on this topic where we have to apply the chain rule when applying the second fundamental theorem of calculus. I hope you found this helpful.